What's mobbing y'all? Good morning, man. Grace and peace to you. Uh, man, I hope y'all blessed. Hope y'all keeping Christ the center and focus on all you say, think, and do. Um, we're going to get into a couple of things today real quick. I ain't going to keep too much of your time, man. I took my old man pills. Okay, y'all be happy to know that. You feel me? I got some aloe vera juice in me, you know, so I'm feeling spunky, right? And uh, no grits today, man. But question of the day, how ghetto is it to go to the gym and your water bottle is a mason jar? I just want to know. <laughs> I'm good with that. That's, that's what I did today. No so, lid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, peep, I was in Exodus chapter 5 today, um, and, and something really stuck out to me. I believe it's verse 2. So, Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh and command him in the authority of the Lord, you know, to let the Israelite people go. Um, the Israelite people had grown in number um, after, you know, Joseph and, and that whole situation where he was able to save the people from famine and, you know, all of, of the nation kind of was able to relocate into Egypt and, and was able to grow and thrive, you know, uh, because of what Joseph, um, God used Joseph to do. And then over time, as the people grew, uh, the Pharaoh at the time began to fear the people. Um, because he just felt like, man, if these dudes are so deep that if if they ever were to decide to trip on us, you know, they could overtake us. And so kind of as a preemptive strike against um, Israel, he, he basically uh, began to oppress them. And then what we see is, you know, they go through a long period of oppression, crying out to God. The Lord hears their cry, sends a deliverer um, by way of Moses. Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh and uh, command Pharaoh by the authority of the Lord to let the people go. And this is what Pharaoh says, and it stuck out to me. He said, basically, like, who is the Lord? Like, I don't, I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? You guys coming in the authority of somebody I don't even know. And and because of that, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to go, uh, I'm not going to let the people go, and I'm going to go harder on the people. And um, it kind of what stuck out to me is the fact that what I see in there is how ignorance about who God is, it, it, it's, it's natural byproduct is disobedience to his word. You see what I'm saying? And so um, there's so much that could be said about this, but that's really what I want to challenge you guys with. My whole goal and aim is to not just encourage you guys to get into the word. It's really to help you guys see the value of God's word. You see what I'm saying? Because what I've grown to understand is the things that we value, we cherish. The things that we cherish, we pursue and we desire to cultivate. And so it's one thing kind of, you know, it can become like this cumbersome task and kind of religious chore to just be in the Bible every day. If we really don't understand like the value of God's word and what it will enable us to do and enlighten us to like the more we know the Lord. Pharaoh had no knowledge of God. Therefore, he had no desire to serve or please him. You know what I'm saying? And and the same can be with us. You feel me? Those of us who have no knowledge or limited knowledge and understanding of God, well, where there is no knowledge of something, you certainly can't have love for it. You don't know it to love it. You see what I'm saying? And a desire to serve and a desire to obey and to please and honor something is born from lo love for something. And love for something is born from intimate knowledge of something. And so, you know, the more that we grow in love with God, it will be in light of our knowledge of God by way of his word. You see what I'm saying? And so for those of us that claim that we love God and we desire to love him deeper, we need to understand how important it is that we learn him in light of his word in order to be successful in that area of our lives. For those of us who desire um, to grow in, in our obedience towards God's word, you know, we, we, we want it to become something that when he speaks, we just obey, you know, that reflex kind of response. Well, that also comes from a, a deeper love relationship with God and a deep, which produces a deeper desire to serve and please him. Well, that also will come from a knowledge and understanding of God's word. So you must understand that. And so, you know, let's not be you know, um, as, as Pharaoh was, where he, he notice he didn't say, yo, who is the Lord? Teach me of this God. That's not, he, he, had, he had access to, to knowledge of God through the prophet Moses. He didn't even ask him more information. He said, based on the fact that I don't know him, this is how I'm getting down. I'm rebelling. 
You know what I'm saying? And so we could see even in that his heart, Pharaoh's heart was not to know God. His natural inclination was to rebel. He just used his lack of knowledge of God as the excuse to act on that rebellion. And we can do that and tend to do that all the time. And so, look, um, let's not be comfortable in ignorance. Let's not be um, uh, satisfied, you know, with with where we're currently at. Let's be grateful for where God has brought us to. But let's also strive um, to to reach that mark of the high calling, like the Apostle Paul talks about. Man, like let's really aim for um, more. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to our walk and relationship with God. So uh, that's what the Lord had me on today, man. I hope that it blesses you guys. Like I said, um, I believe it's Exodus chapter five. You can kind of see more of that. Um, I encourage you to study more of that. But before I go, I want to turn it over to my little bro. Um, pray for my hood. Got some things coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks that we want y'all to know about. So. Uh, take it away, my guy. Yes, sir. Thank you for the word first and foremost. Yeah, watch out now. You feel me? <laughs> Thank you for the word first and foremost, bro. Um, first off, man, pray for my hood, man. We want to uh, go ahead and get straight to the point. Um, Ark City, Kansas, we're doing a community cookout October 3rd. Um, go to my social media, 7 Deuce Hog Mob, or you can go to Hog Mob, uh, whichever one. And all of the flyers and stuff that we're doing as far as ministry, uh, you know, our mission trips and all that will be on there. So October 3rd is Ark City, Kansas. That's a community cookout. October 8th, we will be in San Antonio, Texas for a prayer walk. October 9th will be another prayer walk in Texas City, Texas. Then on the 10th, we will be in Shreveport, Louisiana. I encourage everybody, man, bring your family out. If you're in any of them communities and you just want to come fellowship and join us to pray over the communities, share the gospel, um, you know, and if feasible, we're going to do our best to try to set up some baptisms out there as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, pretty much we're going out there just showing the love of Christ, you know, and by our actions, allowing individuals to see that we are believers, not just by our words, but really putting our hands to the plow. Um, as far as if there's anybody who would like to help with these mission trips or donations or anything along them lines, you can go to hogmob.com and become a monthly Patreon member. We highly appreciate all of the members and the donations that you're giving us. Um, we've been able to do some amazing things uh, in these communities and in these streets. If you would like to book Pray For My Hood, you can go to hogmob.com. You can book us through there. Um, we love to come out. We don't just do prayer walks. We do community cookouts, block parties, stuff along them lines, man. So I just wanted to get that information out to y'all. Y'all have a blessed day in Jesus' name, man. And if, if there's something you can do for your neighbor, love your neighbor today, man. If there's something you can go out and help somebody with or you see somebody struggling with something, man, help bear that load, man, and share the gospel with them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all, man. Thank you for the time. And as always, keep mobbing, man, for Christ. Amen. Mob